All right, hello, this is Melissa, the insurance exam queen. I'm gonna talk about taking the state exam. So this is just a general overview for everyone who is going in to take the test or if you have retested or anything like that. First of all, the energy of how you feel is incredibly important. If you feel like terrified, if you feel like you're going to fail, if you feel like this is the worst thing ever, that is what you're going to get back as your test result. So you need to go in with awesome energy. You need to go in excited to take the test, excited to pass. And I have created an audio on my YouTube channel called About to Test Audio that will help you be excited heading into the exam. Okay. So first of all, your energy is very important. Your energy for studying, your mindset for studying. So when, when you have a mindset of, I'm scared of this test, it's too hard, I'm scared of failing, you, you bring that back to yourself when you're studying. So you need to generate a mindset of, of positivity, of excitement. I'm, I'm entering this career so that I can change lives, so I can help people, so I can um, protect people's assets. You, you want to have an energy of excitement heading into the, the exam and for studying. So on my YouTube channel, I have about to study, about to test motivation audios that you listen to on repeat that will help get you in the, in the right mindset. So mindset and energy are super important. The night before the exam, the night before the exam, do not cram. You're not cramming. If you are cramming, you are putting out the energy that you don't know enough, that you're, you're not prepared. The best thing to do the night before the exam is to relax, just chill, do your favorite thing. Put out the energy that says, I've got this. I've got this in the bag. I can pass this exam, no problem. That's the kind of energy you want. So if you spend your the night before the test, relaxing and doing your favorite thing instead of cramming, you're actually sending out the energy that, and we are energetic beings. We, we are, it's scientifically proven. We, we are more energy than we are cells, okay? So you've got to put out the energy that you want to receive back, okay? So the energy that you want to put out is I've got this. I know what I need to know. I trust that all the knowledge is in my brain. I trust that I studied. I trust that I have the information I need. And I trust that whatever the results happen, it's what I need to happen, okay? If you fail the exam, even though you were super excited and you were in the right energy, you have to trust that there's a reason you failed the exam. You have to trust that there is a story, there is something you need to learn, there is some, and not just learn as in content, but building your character. Insurance is a career, I'll tell you, insurance is amazing. Okay. Insurance is super amazing, but not everybody makes it. It's a field that you have to have a strong character in. You have to have a strong desire to succeed. And if you take your test and you fail and you go, oh my God, I'm such a failure. I'm so stupid. This, I'm, I never should have done this. Oh my God, this is not meant for me. You're right in a way. You don't have the character you don't have the development of a person that needs to be successful in insurance. You need to flip that around. You got to build that character. You got to build those muscles. Unfortunately, in the schooling system, we were, uh, you know, t told that if you fail, it's the worst thing in the world. How many of us, you know, took a test in high school or middle school or, or whatever, elementary, and we failed and it was like the worst thing ever. Right, so we we all have this leftover bad juju from elementary and, and middle school and high school that tells us failing is the worst thing. So you get your paper back, you see a fail, and you think it's the end of the world. You've got to remove that thought process. You got to remove that that bad juju from your from your body. It is okay to fail. It is okay to fail. Most people will fail this test, and. It, it just, it, it's part of your story. It's part of what you need to go through. I i know somebody, we had the highest number I've seen is 16 attempts, 16. And I know many six figure earners who took the, and I know there are some states that only allow you to take it so many times. I know that. 
but you still have to trust that that's part of your story, that that's part of your journey. Everything is working out for you all the time. That is the belief system I follow in it in my entire life. The more I say that to myself, the better and better my life gets. Everything is working out for me all the time. Everything is working out for me all the time. If I fail the exam, I can feel disappointed. I can feel sad. And once I clear out the, ah, get those feelings out, okay, then say, okay, there is a reason. There is a reason I failed and I trust it is for my betterment. I trust that it is leading me to something great, right? There are people whose stories of failing the exam multiple times have inspired other people. You could be that person for someone else, okay? I had a girl and she even, uh, back when I was able to offer one-on-one, she paid $1,000 to work with me one-on-one. And every person had pretty much passed the exam immediately after working with me one-on-one. She took her attempt. She didn't pass. After working, she worked with me for about a week. Even I was like, oh, she didn't pass. I was like, everyone's passed after they worked with me one-on-one. But it didn't happen. And it was it was a lesson for both her and I. She, in between her next attempt, she was dropping her kids off at school and she was wearing her shirt. She was already working for the agency. And so she was wearing her, her uh, State Farm shirt. And this woman came up to her and she said, um, uh, how, you know, how, how do you like insurance? Whatever. She's like, actually, I'm still testing. And the woman said, how, you know, um, she, the woman held her hand. So the stranger woman in the line of picking up her spool, she holds her hand and she goes, I had to take it five times. You've got this. You're going to pass your next time. And she passed it the very next time. Like we have to trust that there are moments in our life, situations in our life, circumstances in our life that need to happen the way they're happening to work out whatever it is that you actually want to happen in your greatest good, okay? So she passed her very next time. And the story of that woman, that connection that she had at that moment at the bus stop was needed to happen, that that needed to happen. So she needed to fail in order for that to happen, you know? We have to trust that everything is working out for us. So you're an energetic being. You've got to have the excitement that that you can pass. And then if you fail, you can't let it destroy you. You can't let it tear you apart. I know many six-figure insurance earners who had to take the test multiple times. And they don't care how many times it took them to pass when they're cashing that check. When you, once you, once you're rolling and you're getting your commission, I mean, it doesn't matter how many times you took the test. You joke about it. Like, oh my God, I have to take that thing eight times. And, and keep in mind, this is the equivalent of a college degree and you can get it done in a matter of two weeks. I've seen some people study and pass in three days, even if it took you a year, a year of studying, even if it took you an entire year of studying. You're getting a college degree equivalent with one test, okay? One test. And you're getting into a career that can lead to extreme financial independence. So in my family, we're not a very wealthy family. We only, we, I'm, I'm a third generation immigrant. We only, we've only came to America not that long ago, okay? And we started out as farmers in my family. And, and then we lost our land, <laughs> like, and, and there's one wealthy person in our whole family and she's an insurance agent and she was a single mother. She wanted a career that she could make money, be with her children and not worry and not stress. And she runs her own uh, American family insurance agency out of Colorado Springs. And she is the wealthiest person in our family. And she went to every basketball game, every baseball game. She was with her children. Like that is so amazing that we have that opportunity available to us in insurance. But if we take that test and we see a failure and we're ready to throw it all away, really, was that worth it? Seeing the fail and, and, and letting your whole life crumble because you saw a fail on the paper, because you have bad leftover juju from middle school that where the teacher made you so, so sad for failing. I've seen it happen. That's why I had to leave the education system. We, we mistreat children in school. And we give them this mindset, it's pass or fail and failure is the worst. And oh my God, it's the end of the world. We've got to let that go. We've got to let that go. We've got to be in the right mindset to test. We got to remember our mission. Our mission is financial freedom. Our mission is an amazing career. 
And all of that is available with your insurance license. So that failure cannot be a stop. That failure is, I trust that this is working out for me. I trust that I that whatever is happening needs to happen this way. I know that every, nothing that is meant for you can be taken from you. Not a job, not a passing score. If it is meant for you, it's gonna happen. So a lot of people too will also lose their job. There's many people, and I've worked with you. I've been to the call centers where you had two chances to pass. And if you didn't pass, you failed and they fired you. Not every job is meant for you. Just because it was the opportunity that introduced you to insurance doesn't mean it's where you should stay. Take it as a blessing that you left that company. If they were willing to let you go after two attempts, trust that there is another better company in alignment with you. And you, there, the insurance jobs are, are many. There's, there's plenty. There's never not a job open in insurance. And you may need to do commission only, but my gosh, if you have the right mindset and the right mentality, it is it is easy. It is it is more than enough to make so much money. So much money can be made in the insurance in in the insurance industry, even as commission only. And trust me, I get it. I moved to commission only by becoming the insurance exam queen. I had a corporate job, a corporate job doing what I'm doing now. Some of you have watched the videos on Exam FX, and you hear my voice. And you saw me on those videos. I had a corporate job doing this. My salary was limited and it was capped. And I wasn't able to teach how I wanted to teach. I was stuck in their system. And I was like, I know that if I could just start a YouTube channel, great things would happen. And that's all I, I quit my whole job with no plan other than to start a YouTube channel. No other plan than to start a YouTube channel, okay? Do the math right now, 92 people, even at $7 a ticket, how much money has been raised? How My class series sell for $97, $27. My YouTube channel generates money. I took the leap and the trust of faith that if I do, if, if, if I can leave a job with a secure paycheck, I can leave a job with, with secure insurance and I can make it and, and it will work out and it did exponentially because I constantly repeat to myself, everything is working out in my favor. 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 So even when you see the fail, there are times in my business, I had a fail. I had an agency who wanted to work with me and they were going to pay me all kinds of money to get them set up on the insurance exam queen stuff. And after a month or two, they, they left. If I had seen that as a fail, and said, oh my God, the first agency that started to work with me, they, they, they quit, I should quit. And then I wouldn't be here today with you all, right? I can't, you can't look at a failure as a stop. A failure is a time to learn and grow, pivot, adapt. It's, it's not the end of the world, okay? <clears throat> so you gotta have the right energy, the right mindset. And a person in insurance, in order to make it in the insurance industry, you can look up the numbers. Most people fail in the insurance industry. Because you don't have the character of, I can see a fail and keep going. If you have the character of, I have a fail and I'm the worst person and I can't believe I did all this studying and it was for nothing. And that's the mindset of a person who will not make it in the insurance industry. If you want to make it in the insurance industry, you have to have a mindset of, I didn't make any sales today, but I'm going to get back up and do it again tomorrow. And I didn't make any sales today, but I'm going to get back up and do it again tomorrow. I'm excited. I know that it's coming. I know that it's happening. I'm trusting that, that my customers are coming. I, I even do this. You can go back on my Facebook. There's me. I was sitting in my, from my desk and I go, customers are lining up at the door. People are coming to me every day to, to pass their exam. More and more people every single day are showing up to be able to pass their exam and to get the help that they need. And that was back when I had a hundred people on my YouTube. Now we have almost 12,000 on my YouTube. I literally spoke it into existence and I trusted and I had the faith to hold on. I only earned $250 my first month in business. Only $250 my first month of business as the insurance exam queen. If I would have let that determine my future success, I wouldn't be here today. And today, it's, it's crazy. I, I made a link for you guys to join two classes over this weekend and, and it's already generated more than $2,000 for, 
for this class between these raffles and everything because I needed, I was like, I need some home renovations. I'm going to throw out a cheap class and see what happens. Okay. It's just, it's, it's not the circumstances in your life that determine what happens. It's what's going on inside of you that determines what happens. Okay. <clears throat> so you've got to make the decision. I'm doing this no matter what. I trust and believe that everything is working out for me. I'm super excited to study. I'm super excited to test. I'm super excited to be an insurance agent and I will do what I need to do to make it happen. And if we look at that fail as the end of the world, instead of an opportunity to learn and grow and develop our character, then you, 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 that's when you lose. That's when you really lose. It's not the fail, that's the loss. It's the you defeat with the defeated mindset. That is the true loss, okay? But we have to trust it's all working out. It's all working out. It's all working out. It's all working out. It's all working out all the time. Now, <laughs> enough about energy and mindset, but that is so important. It is the most important. You literally, they can literally measure your energy coming off your body. They can literally measure it. When we have a thought, it literally leaves our brain as a wave, right? It leaves our brain as a wave. They can measure it. Okay, so when you have a thought, leave your brain like I'm a failure that is going out into the universe and what comes back failure. So you have to have a thought wave that says I'm going to pass. I'm going to I'm going to succeed. I'm doing I'm, you know, moving greatly in my life. Like you've got to put out these great thoughts so that the great thoughts come back. Okay, <clears throat> law of attraction is what some people call it. But what whatever it is that you're thinking and feeling is what's going to return back to you. So if you're thinking and failing feeling that this test is too hard. I can't get this. I'm, I'm going to fail. Like, oh my God, this is the end of the world. You're going to receive that back. So you got to put out the different energy and put out the energy. And, and so many people you, you post, I got a 68. Oh my God, this is the worst. And blah, blah, blah. I'm like a 68. You're two away from passing, just two away from passing. Celebrate that. Celebrate that. There are people who need 20 some points to pass. And they're still excited. And you're you're over here crying about your 68. I mean, I get it. Cry, okay? I'm not shaming you for crying. But <laughs> my point is, is celebrate, celebrate that you are only to shift your energy, change your energy from that of sadness to failing to excitement that you're only two points away. You only have a little bit more study, just a little bit more study and, and you can pull that past, okay? And it might just be a difference of mindset, going in excited instead of going in, um, you know, sad and scared and terrified, right? You want to go in happy and looking forward to it. And if you, if you go in looking at it as this like, oh my God, I'm so scared of this exam. <laughs> You're going to, that fear is going to run on the test. Now, in terms of taking the test, <clears throat> here's what I saw when, when I was working with one of my first, um, my first personal clients, she took a test in front of me. So we were in a Zoom meeting and we pulled up her Excel course and she was taking the test. And I said, I just want you to take it. I'm gonna watch you the whole time. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna just pretend I'm not here. I just wanna watch your screen taking it because I needed to see where, where she, what she was doing, like what her thought process was. And I can see that happen on the exam because she would read the question and then she would move her mouse to what she thought the answer was. And then she would, and then she might go back between the two of them. So I could tell like she was reading these two and comparing these two. She would hover on the correct one for a while and then click the other one <laughs> and then move on. And so this is where you have to not doubt yourself. You have to trust yourself. You have to trust your intuition. There are a lot of times on the exam where you, you there is going to be four answer choices, right? Only one of them is correct. Three of them are bogus, throw away, right? They're, they're not correct. Your job is not even to fully understand everything. Your job is to pick the best choice out of four, okay? Now, when you are reading these three other choices, what really trips some people up is reading something they don't remember. So you read like, you know, choice C and you're like, I don't remember reading about that. And then for some reason you hyper-focus on it and you think that I didn't read it. It must be the right answer. Like, I don't know why or how that happens. 
But if you don't know what they're talking about, throw it away, throw it away. It is not an answer choice. If you see a, um, if you see a acronym that you're unfamiliar with, people obsess on it. I didn't learn about that. I don't understand that. That must be the right answer. What? What? No, throw it away. Get rid of it. There's three bogus, there's three bogus answers. Only one of them is correct. Okay. So when you see an answer choice that's talking about something you are totally unfamiliar with, throw it away. Okay. Throw it away. Trust your gut and make a decision and move on. Overanalyzation and overthinking will um, cause you to choose the wrong answer rather than the right one. You want to do spend time reading the question, like really read the question, spend time reading the question, and then read the answer choice. So like, in fact, I recommend read the question and then what do you think the answer is? What do I think the answer is going to be? And I may say it to myself, then read the answer choices. If the answer you said to yourself, because you don't move your mouth while you're taking the test, <laughs> Um, if you see that as one of the answer choices, pick it and move on, right? If you don't see it, there's usually two that you can throw away right away. And then there's two that you kind of are stuck between. Read the answer choices again, read the question, read the answer choices again, go with what one feels right, and then move on, okay? I have even told people, and this has worked, this has worked for some people, because again, we're energetic beings, we're all connected, we're all one. Okay. But when you're taking the test and you're still really unsure, I want you to go in your head. This is weird. I know, but it works for many people. They've said it. They've come back and they said, Oh my God, this worked for me is they would ask me the question. They'll say, Melissa, what's this, this answer. And what's this question? And they'll read the question in their head. Cause some people have internal monologues. I know some people don't, but most do. They'll read the question. They'll read the answer choices. And then they'll get like a hit, like choose D choose C choose B and they'll just pick it and move on, okay? So try that, okay? Just try the energy. And then the other thing that I saw her do was she would, when she got a, so the test that she was taking would immediately tell her if she was right or wrong. Not every test does that, especially not the state exam. You don't know if you got it right or wrong, you just gotta move on. But she was taking a practice test that did immediately tell her if she was right or wrong. And here's what I noticed. She, when she got the answer right, when she knew it was the right answer, she she blew past it, right? So she clicked the correct answer, blew past it, hit, immediately hit next. Zero time to celebrate. Zero time to go, yeah, I got that one right. But when she would get a question wrong, she would say, oh, ah, ah. She would exert energy on the wrong questions and spend no time celebrating that she got a question right. And she, and she was so close to, to pass. I think, I think she, she actually did pass that exam. Pretty sure she did. But you've got to celebrate when you feel confident. And honestly, I think you should celebrate every answer. I got that one right. I got that one right. I got that one right. Even if you have no freaking idea. Because again, we're energetic beings and the energy we put out. If you start taking the test and you're like, oh, I got that one wrong. Oh, I got that one wrong. Oh, I got that one wrong. First of all, you don't even know. You don't even know if you got it wrong. Okay, that was another thing a girl was doing. She was writing down every answer she thought she got wrong. Did she actually know if it was wrong? No, she assumed it was wrong. Once she got to, however, like, you know, if the exam is a hundred questions, and so that means you got, and if you need a 70%, you basically can get 30 wrong. Once she had a sheet of 30 wrong, in her mind, she was done. But there's no way of knowing that those 30 were actually wrong. Just because you're not confident doesn't mean you got it wrong. You, you still have a 25% chance of guessing correctly, right? So every question she thought she got wrong, she wrote it down. As soon as she saw 30 or close to 30, she, the, the whole test was done for her because I already knew that I failed, okay? You don't actually know that you got those wrong. You don't, act, they, you don't actually know that they're counting against you. But if you're taking the test thinking, I got that one wrong, I got that one wrong, I got that one wrong, 
your energy goes down and down and down. Your mindset goes down and down and down. Your ability to think goes down and down. You, you enter fight or flight. Instead of staying excited and alert and focused, you go into this mindset of fight or flight. Like this is all done. This is all over. This is all, this is all sucky. The energy that you have that carries you throughout the exam will determine your results. So if you answer a question, whether you know you got it right or wrong, just celebrate. I got that one right. I got that one right. I got that one right. And your energy will feel good. The more you're feeling good, the better you can answer the questions. But if you're feeling bad, the less good you can answer the questions, right? So if I feel bad, my results will be bad. If I feel good, my results will be good. Okay. And again, even if you don't secure that pass, I felt good. I celebrated every question, Melissa, like you said, and I felt so good. Okay. Everything is working out for you. Trust that there's a reason you failed and just do the next right step. El Elsa says it. No, not Elsa. Anna. When she thought this is in Frozen, when she thought her sister died and she was in this dark cave of depression, she sang a song that was like, just take the next right step. So you fail. What's the next right step? Analyze your score sheet, study what you need, go back at it again. The next right step is not beating yourself up and berating yourself for a failing exam. Okay, that's not the next right, the next, just one step at a time, one step at a time. So have energy and excitement as you're moving through the exam instead of thinking that you're failing. So do your best guess, don't overthink, don't overanalyze, don't change your answers. If you feel like it's C, choose C. Don't choose D because it has a phrase you never saw before and that you hyper-focus on it. Let it go, okay? Um, look at, and this is something Peter, Peter will get more, actually, I'm a little bit more woo-woo about it. <laughs> uh, Peter will be more precise about it. So if you were to look at, you know, two questions, sometimes two that are similar, they might have just a word that's different. Like sometimes they'll have a difference between insured and insurer. The insured submits premium or the insurer submits premium. That can throw you off. So just double check, make sure who they're actually talking about. Is there one word off between these two answer choices and read it slower? So take your time. There's a difference between taking your time to read and taking your time to overthink. You want to take your time to read and slow down and read your answer choices, but you don't want to overanalyze, overthink, and rerun thoughts in your head a thousand times, okay? So as long as you took the time to read the question and to know what, it's, what is actually being asked, then when you... Uh, versus, you know, well, what if it's this? And what if it's, and oh my God, I don't remember. And what, oh my God, like, I'm so scared to answer this question. And what if I get it wrong? And I don't know. I go, that, no, you don't want that. Okay. Take the time to read it, but don't take the time to sit there and beat yourself up. Just choose it and move on, choose it and move on. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the other thing with taking the exam again is we remember the questions we are scared about. We, or, or we remember the questions we are not prepared for. So as you're taking the test, and this is something that happens to people, especially when you watch my videos, I don't go heavy into commercial because the, most states don't need it. And it's so much complex information. So many little tiny details. You do have about two minutes for each question, um, depending on the state you're in. <clears throat> but usually it's, it's a little bit less than a minute and a half per question. But there's some questions that you'll be able to answer in 30 seconds and some questions you'll need to take like a two full minutes on, um, but it all kind of balances out. You do have to go quick, right? You can't be that slow. And this is why it's so important to lock in easy knowledge. Easy knowledge is general insurance, definitions, um, quick things to memorize, which is what I focus on. I don't focus on teaching you every possible thing that you might see. I focus on teaching you easy to understand, easy to memorize, easy to recall, able to lock in those questions and get them done. Because the faster you can answer easy questions, the more time you have for the longer, harder questions. So this is where the Kahoot games are really powerful. And again, you can go to my website under the resources and you can play the Kahoot games and they're, they're on a timer. And you need to get fast. So some of you will fail, not because you lack the knowledge, but because you took too long. I've seen it many, you, you know you took too long when there's no correct, there, there's usually they break up the exam into two parts, general and then state law. And there's actually two separate sections in some states, not all states. 
But when there's no points correct in the state law section, I'm like, you ran out of time. You didn't even finish the entire exam because you took too long answering questions. This is why it's so important to um, know the knowledge quickly, fast, and easy. And that's why I say some things like agreement is known, it's offer and acceptance. Agreement is known, it's offer and acceptance. Agreement is known, it's offer and acceptance. I don't say those things for myself. I say them for you to say it yourself and for you to memorize it. The more you memorize quick, easy things, the faster you can answer the questions and, and save more time for the accept questions. The accept questions like all the following are true except, those are the ones you need to take a lot of time on. Those are the ones you need to slow down with um, because they, they trick you up. Even myself, I get tripped up on the accept questions all the time. And I'm like, wait, 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 slow down, slow down, slow down. Uh, but the, the, the quick questions, the definition questions, I focus a lot on definitions because they're easy to get. And, it, and this is where people run into problems is they'll, they'll forget that they had a bunch of easy questions that they just breeze through. And then they get to a commercial question or a question they don't know or understand and you hyper-focus on it. And then you, you leave the test saying, my whole test was commercial. No, it wasn't. Look at the exam breakdown. It's impossible for your whole test to be commercial. You only remembered the commercial questions because they terrorized you. They made you think you weren't prepared. But you're allowed so many to get wrong. There's, you're allowed 30% in most states to get wrong. So even when you have a feeling of, I got this wrong, I'm allowed to get so many wrong. There's enough space for me to get this wrong. It's fine. I'm going to get the next one correct. Like that's the kind of energy you've got to have as you're, you know, you're going through the exam. Okay. So you do have to be quick. You do need to be fast with, with uh, answering the questions and then take the time on the questions that are longer. Don't spend a lot of time on questions you don't feel prepared for. So if it's a commercial question and it's like a specific number and you have no memory of learning this number, don't spend time there. Don't spend a lot of time there over and over. The, you're not going to create knowledge you don't have in your head. I mean, you could technically because we're all one and we all have access to the same knowledge. But um, if it's a question you're not prepared for, don't spend a lot of time on it. Make your best guess and move on. Statistically speaking, C, the answer choice C is more likely to be correct than not for whatever reason. It's just a weird test thing. Um, but just choose an answer that seems right and move on. Um, that, that, you know, a lot of homeowners and dwelling translates to commercial CPP and, and BOP. So if it feels like, you know, homeowners would be right, then choose the right answer there. Another thing with commercial is um, a lot of the numbers are the same, like the number 10 or 25 is pretty big on commercial. And I don't just mean 10 or 25, but like a thousand or 10,000 or uh, 250 or 2,500, uh, 25,000. For whatever reason, those numbers show up more often than not. So if you get a commercial question and you don't know the answer, look for one that starts with a 10 or a 25 and choose that number. You're more likely to be correct than not um, just because those numbers show up. When it comes to state law, 30 days. 30 days is the most common answer for a lot of things. Just choose 30 days if you don't know, right? So sometimes you might not know all of the knowledge, but if you can make an educated guess, like with commercial, there's a lot of questions about how many feet away can it be? And it's usually a hundred feet. So if you, if you think 10, and again, it could, it's not just 10 and 25, but starts with 10, starts with 25. When you see those numbers, just, I'm just going to choose a hundred feet. Every time I get a commercial question, ask about feet and there's a hundred, I'm just going to choose a hundred feet, right? So there's little tricks that you can do to, um, you know, move beyond trying to memorize every little single thing. So when you're like studying commercial, you know, look at all the numbers you see. What's the most common number? What is the most number, the common number that you're seeing? And then just memorize that one. And then when you're taking the test and you get a question about a number, choose that number. Okay. So that's something that, that you can do as well. But remember, what you remember when you leave that test is what, what you felt unprepared for. And you look at your, like I, I, even people look at your score sheet. I'm like, you actually scored pretty decent in commercial, but 
You were so terrified of the questions. You think you got them all wrong, but you didn't get them all wrong. Look at your score sheet. That's how many questions you got correct. And it depends. Some of you guys don't get to see how many commercial questions. If you have a Pearson breakdown, you just get black lines that, that don't mean much to you. But a lot of you are in states where you actually get max score versus your score and you can see the difference. Um, what else about the test? So again, have energy of excitement, relax the night before, no cramming, trust that you've got it in the bag, feel excited every time you're answering a question and whatever you see on that score sheet, pass or fail, celebrate it. I celebrate that I took this test even though I was really nervous and I got a 65 and I'm going to have to take it again, but I trust that it's part of my journey and it's, and it's just, I'm just going to take it again. Okay. If you look at it as the worst thing in the world, that's, that's not, a, that's, that's not helpful for you. You got to look at it as part of the journey. It's just part of the process. How many of us, you know, it's, it's as silly as how many boyfriends and girlfriends did it take you to, to get to the right one? Like we look at these exams as like, like, uh, you know, if I don't get it this first time, it's all over. You know, sometimes we feel that way with a relationship, but it's so normal to have multiple, it takes you a few to get to the right one, right? Like this, this is what's funny. This is my third David <laughs> and this will be my third marriage. And I don't look at it as a failure. I look at it. Well, I finally figured out what I actually wanted and, and what's in alignment with me, you know, like, there's always a reason that we go through what we go through. And we and if we trust that it is for our betterment instead of our detriment, it works out for our betterment. <clears throat> uh, and let me think about anything else about the, taking the exam. I think that's about the advice I got for, for taking the exam. Have the energy, have the excitement. Mindset is so important, so important, so important, so important. Your energy and your mindset are the most important thing, more than understanding the knowledge. Because if you have the right energy and the right mindset, you can, this is, I know this is going to sound woo-woo to you, okay? This is going to sound real crazy, but all, you have access to all the knowledge in the world. It's called the quantum field. It's quantum physics. It, 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 you have access, we are everything. Everything came from one thing and it has just expanded and expanded and expanded. We are all the universe. You have access to every piece of knowledge that's available. And when you can meditate to the point where you're in touch with everything, you can get every answer you need correct for the exam. So the knowledge is out there. It's all accessible to you. Um, so e even just having good energy allows you to access that knowledge, right? Even if you're like, I have no idea what I'm reading, but something just keeps telling me to choose C. So I'm going to choose C and you choose C, right? Feeling good about it is going to serve you better than feeling bad about it. Yes, it's the, the Akashic records if you get into that woo-woo stuff. <laughs> I'm very woo-woo, by the way, but... Um, you have access to all the knowledge in the world. It's all available. It's all there. Um, and, and we're just learning really how to tap into to, to all of that stuff. But it's whatever you are, whatever energy you're putting out is what you're going to receive. You are an energetic being more than you are a bio, biological being. And we know this. There is science behind it. We don't talk about it on a mainstream, but it is the truth. You are more energy than you are biological. And when you tap into that, you, 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 find powers that you didn't even know you had You find knowledge you didn't know you had. And I'm telling you, it is the craziest thing because like when I started this business, all I knew was that I started a YouTube channel. I don't know how to run a business. I don't know how to build a website. I don't know how to do all the things that I ended up doing. And I did them all pretty much myself. When I needed the knowledge to take the next step in my business, it showed up an idea, an inspiration, a person told it to me. We have to trust that whatever we need when we need it is going to show up the moment we need it. And when you have that kind of energy to trust like that, it shows up. Um, if you want to get biblical about it, the uh, story of Abraham. So Abraham was told by God that he would um, basically his children would rule the whole earth and he would take over and um, they would all, you know, just he'd have an amazing family line. And Abraham was like ancient and he had no children yet. And it took him years before he finally was able to get a child. And then God was like, I need you to take your son up to this sacrificing rock and I need you to kill your son. And Abraham was like, bro, like I literally spent years and years and years and years trying to even get a baby, trying to get a child. 
you finally gave me one and now you're telling me to kill him. And God said, "Uh uh-huh. (laughs) <laughs> so Abraham takes his son up to the sacrifice rock. He lays him out. He takes the knife. And right as he is about to kill his son, God says, cool, you're good. You're good. Thanks. I just needed to make sure you trusted me like no other. And he didn't, he didn't need to murder his son. The answer comes in at the moment we are doing the thing we are most afraid of. The, the, the thing we need shows up at the 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 exact moment we we love it in books and movies we just don't like it in our real life okay when you're reading a book or a movie you 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 know that the climate the the biggest moment like they, they leave you on a cliffhanger at the end of the tv show and we know the next episode we watch they solve all the problems until they build up to a next thing the answer comes in right at the last moment right when you need it not before right then so you have to you have to trust that even though you're on this journey and you don't know what's going to happen, you don't know how it's going to look, you've got to trust that everything will show up when it needs to, exactly when it needs to, even at the last moment where you think all hope is lost, that's when it shows up. It's in every book, every movie that we watch, every TV show, it all shows up after the big, it's, oh my God, the crazy thing is going to happen, ah! and then pff, it all gets solved. It all gets worked out. Okay. You've got to trust that that is happening in your own life. We, we have a lot of fear in how we, we operate and how we handle things. Um, and because of how we were raised, because our parents didn't know how to regulate their own emotions, um, because the school system is, is raising factory people instead of whole human beings. We have a lot of juju that, that, um, a lot of programming and conditioning that, makes us stay fear-based, but fear-based doesn't serve you. And you, you are a being who is able to accomplish whatever you want. And when you can remove that fear-based operating system, when you can remove the worry, when you can remove the anxiety and trust that everything is working out for you, you begin to see it. Whatever you're looking for, you will find evidence of. There's literally a part in your brain. This is why you can hear your name in a crowd of people and someone else doesn't. If I'm in a room of of hundreds of people, somebody says my name, I hear it. You didn't hear it. I did because my brain is in tune with that. Whatever you're looking for, you will find. So if you are constantly looking for fear and worry and doubt, you'll find it and you'll get more of it. But when you're looking for amazingness, everything is working out for me, you know, you will, you will find it. Okay. All right. So um, that was, I'm going to let that go for, for test tips. So I'm actually going to stop the recording and I've been watching some of the comments, but I haven't been able to to grab every single one. Um, But let me stop this real quick. Uh, Again, these are just good, good energy, taking the test, trust yourself. Don't overthink, don't overanalyze, celebrate every question as if you got it right and have the energy of, I got this in the bag instead of I need to cram and, and rush. And that is the, the, the test tips. And I'm going to put this video up on YouTube.